It's absolutely powerful. Let's continue on here. Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD as God's judgment. As God's what? Judgment, judgment upon Israel and Jerusalem for its rejection of the Messiah. Now, remember I told you what was that sequence? Messiah rejected, city destroyed. Let's say it together. Messiah rejected, city destroyed. Now, we've already seen that in Daniel chapter 9. Go to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. And I want to read this to you real quick. Okay, we'll see how fast Pastor Asherick can read. Matthew chapter 21, I'm in verse 33. Matthew 21, verse 33. Are we there? Matthew 21, verse 33. I want everybody there. Follow along. Here we go. Jesus says, Hear another parable. He's speaking to the religious leaders of his day. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it. He dug a wine press in it and he built a tower. And he leased it to vine dressers and went into a far country. Now, when vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Last of all, he sent his son, saying, they will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard. And what did they do? They killed him. Therefore, when the owner of that vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? Do you know what this parable is teaching? Yes or no? This is a simple parable. God set up the nation of Israel. He sent prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet. And most of those prophets were ignored and rejected. Are we clear, everyone? Yes or no? Very broad sweep of Israel's history. And last of all, he sent his son. But what happened to the son? He was killed. Is there any question in anyone's mind what this prophecy is about? Now watch this. Phenomenal. Verse 41. They said to him, because remember Jesus has said, hey, what, what would the guy do? When he comes back, what would he do? Look at verse 41. They said to him, he will, what's the next word? Destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render him the fruits in their seasons. Do you see it? The son was rejected and destruction comes. Son is rejected. What comes? destruction comes. And notice what Jesus says here. Jesus said to them, whoa, 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 haven't you read in the scriptures? Psalm 118, the stone that the builders rejected, the same has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Look at verse 43. What's the first word of verse 43? Therefore. therefore. And when you see the word therefore, ask yourself, what's that therefore? Here's Jesus' conclusion based on this parable and based on their own condemnation of themselves. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. Beloved, if language has meaning, what Jesus is saying is, after you reject me as God's son, the privileges and the prerogatives of the kingdom will be taken from you and given to another nation. Right. If language has meaning, what else could that verse possibly mean? Look at this. Verse 44, and whoever falls on this stone will be broken. That stone, of course, is Jesus Christ, but on whomsoever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Now look at verse 45. Now when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking of them. Did they know what he was talking about? Yeah, and what, they didn't like it one bit. Verse 46, and they sought to lay hands on him. They sought to do the very thing that he just said in the parable would happen. Beloved, what was the sequence? Messiah rejected. City destroyed. Go to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Look at the last three verses of Matthew chapter 23. Here we go. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Verse 37. 23, 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. You who kills the prophets and stones those who were sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not what? Never forget it. God is a gentleman. He will not force his way into your life. He needs you to be willing to let him in. Amen. God won't violate your free will. He has to work with your free will. He says, I wanted to do this. You were not willing. Verse 38. See, your house is left to you. What? Desolate for you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus walks out of the temple precincts for the last time. They had rejected persistently the evidences of his Messiahship. And he says, look, I'm not going to bend your arm and make you accept me. I'm out of here. You won't see me again until you see me in glory. What's the very next thing that happens? Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. The disciples come, uh, when Jesus departed from the temple, his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. Verse 2, Jesus says, stop trying to cheer me up with the temple. Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one what? 
stone will be left here upon another that will not be what? Thrown out. What's he talking about? The destruction of the temple and of the city. Beloved, three times, three times in Daniel chapter 9, Messiah was rejected, city was destroyed. Where did Jesus get his theology from? He knew the prophecies of Daniel. Jesus had to learn just like you and I learn, amen? I mean, he studied the scriptures. He, he had to sit and memorize. He had to know when the devil came to tempt him there. It is written, he said. It is written, he said. It is written. He knew. How did he know? He studied like you and I study. Surely he was God and surely he was a man, but he knew what it was to walk a mile in my moccasins. Amen? And so in Daniel chapter 9, Jesus knew it. The Messiah would be rejected, cut off in the middle of the week, and the city is destroyed. So he tells a parable in Matthew chapter 21. Hey, listen, there was a vineyard, and, and he leased it out, and, and he sent out his servants, and they rejected the servants. And then he sent out his son, and they rejected the son. What would you do? And they said, oh, destruction. He says, that's right. Messiah is rejected. City's destroyed. And then in Matthew chapter 24, he says, hey, your house is left to you desolate. I'm out of here. What, what, what more can I do? I wanted to gather you. you you're not willing. And he walks out and he goes up on Mount Olivet. The disciples come to cheer him up and he says, you know what's going to happen to this city? It's going to be destroyed. Now, if that sequence is clear, I want you to say amen. amen. Messiah is rejected. City is destroyed. Three times. Messiah rejected, city destroyed. So there it is in 34 AD, right there. You say, what happened in 34 AD? It's very simple what happened in 34 AD. Stephen was stoned in 34 AD, thus symbolizing the closing of the covenant. And listen to my language because I'm not going to stutter. At least I'm planning on not stuttering. And that is this. The Jewish nation as a nation, as a what words did I say? As a nation ceased to have the special prerogatives and significance that it had before God up to that time. When they stoned Stephen, when their covenant was confirmed, when they rejected the Messiah, and when that city was destroyed, can Jews still be saved? Sure. Can Jamaicans still be saved? Sure. Can Russians can be saved? Armenians. That's why the Bible... That Romanians, my wife's Romanian, she can be saved. Armenians. Armenians can be saved too. Why not? What God is saying here in the New Testament is He's no longer a respecter of persons. Amen. Amen? We have equal access to God. And so Jews can still be saved, but the Jews as a nation... 34 AD, the stoning of Stephen. What did Jesus say? Therefore, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation that will bear the fruits. Powerful, very simple. So, what happens after 34 AD? The gospel goes to the Gentiles. Gospel's going to the Gentiles. I'm a Gentile, beloved. I mean, by, by nature, I don't think I have any genealogical relationship to Abraham. Maybe I do, some way back. But I'm a Gentile, and, and I'm a Jew by faith. I'm a follower of Abraham by faith. Amen. Listen, I'm looking out here today and I see a whole lot of Gentile faces. You better praise the Lord that the gospel went to the Gentiles. Amen? Amen? Powerful. So the gospel goes to the Gentiles. Now, the church carried the gospel to the Jews, to the Gentiles, and beyond. Now buckle your safety belts. 